Jumbo Mingi, Jumbo Sana, welcome to yet another episode. This is the seventh of all night here at Cafe of Old in Seattle. We are live with John Julius Muhuria, all the way from the beautiful land of Uganda, the source of the River Nile. Just gotta put that out there. Uh, he's an engineer who works here in the Pacific Northwest. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. It's yeah, a pleasure. yeah and, thank you. Uh, thanks yeah. to the organizers, first yeah. and foremost, for organizing such a beautiful oh. night uh, to uh, Nansovit. Thanks for the dinner. Yeah. It was uh, quite uh, delicious this evening. Mm -hmm. And I'm really honored and uh, uh, happy to join tonight and uh, have a conversation with you. Yeah. So thank you for, for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe before uh, 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 kind of like familiarize the audience with uh, with the kind of work that you, you you do here, you're a civil engineer, I understand. Let me talk a little bit about that and how long you've been in Seattle. What's your story? How did you end up in Seattle um, to this point? You know? yeah, 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 sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more What's than your African that? story. <laughs> part of what we, we do actually, yeah. I'll give you a little backstory with um, with the podcast is to demystify the diaspora experience. So you know, just share our stories as immigrants and how we ended up. Mm -hmm. So I'll throw the ball to you and okay. uh, yeah, share, right. share okay. with us. Uh, again, uh, my name is John Julius Moria. I, I have two first names and uh, my parents couldn't decide on which name to have. So they gave me both, <laughs> they gave me both. Yeah. Uh, as uh, my brother just said, I am an engineer by training and uh, I've been to Seattle since the beginning of this year. Uh, I was working in Portland, Oregon, that's where I went to school, to the University of Portland. Um, and I ended up getting into the industry that I'm in today, which is construction and design by accident. So I was a student at the University of Portland a couple of years back, um, and I served to the student body as president at some point. Mm -hmm. And as I was finishing up my mandate as president, uh, one of the regents for the Board of Trustees asked me if I could work in construction. So I started to work with a company called Hoffman Construction mm -hmm. at the time um, and came up to Seattle actually in Everett a couple of years back and uh, worked for Boeing. Then went back to Portland and mm -hmm. uh, I was working on some projects down in Portland uh, and then some opportunities came up to Seattle at the beginning of this year and okay. ended up uh, coming up uh, back to Seattle. And, and I'm glad it's, it's a really challenging space. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. have as many Africans and minorities mm -hmm. in the space. Uh, many of them, I think, uh, end up choosing to do other careers as compared to uh, construction and design. But there's a lot of opportunities and we are trying as much as possible mm -hmm. to get as many people as we can into this space. It, it is a space that is really impacting the economy almost mm -hmm. every single day. So, right. Yeah. And, and I think we talked about this before the, the recording in terms of like having the conversation of, 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 of us as Africans in the U.S. tapping into the intellectual capital of, of, of Africans in the diaspora, which you mentioned that um, a lot of Ugandans are sending money back home and creating, you know, um, in terms of like revenues, earning revenue for the country and earning that for an for an executor, yes, yeah. um, so you know, I address can, that with I, what you're doing with, what's the organization? It's called UNA. UNA, so yeah. UNA yeah. stands for the Uganda North American Association. Okay. Uh, it's an association that was started uh, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, 30 years ago by two sisters in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, last year I was elected to be the vice president of the association. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we do is really bringing together Ugandans uh, in North America, in the diaspora, to talk about uh, our history as a people mm. in a foreign land. But also to ask the, the question on how can we network better mm. out here uh, in the US, in Canada, uh, and ask the other question as well, that what can we do to be part of the transformation in Uganda? Mm -hmm. Because many of us have left, but still the heart is in Uganda, the part of Africa. So uh, usually the conversations are around that. Every single year we do organize a convention. Uh, we were lucky that this year that convention was right here in the Pacific Northwest, in Bellevue at the height. We had around 3,000 people that came to it. We had wow. the Speaker of Parliament. And we are always excited about the opportunities to really engage. These are 3,000 Ugandans that came to Bellevue wow. in Washington. And uh, 
it was it was a good feast yeah. for networking <laughs> yeah. and business as well. Okay. You know, you, yeah. you can have a good time, but also you can do business. Right. You know, so it's right. it's, a, it's a combination of both. Mm. And, uh, it has to be done, but uh, the work we do is really important. I think as Africans in the diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, but also Ugandans in the diaspora. I think we have to do a little bit more in supporting mm -hmm. where we come from, the communities we come from. Yeah. Uh, and that means at times being a little bit uh, uh, not on the normal path, uh, mm -hmm. engaging with events that at times you might not engage with and mm -hmm. uh, getting out there in the communities uh, and engaging and trying to make sure that uh, uh, we are having these conversations. We are retelling our story because right. in so many cases, uh, our story is being told by some other people. Oh man. We are now we are not telling our own story. Right, so right. so how that shapes out and how we get into those spaces to actually tell our yeah. own story as right. we see it. So whenever I see uh, Nasov actually doing the African print fashion show almost uh, every single year, it, it, it inspires many people because yeah. she's true and she means it mm -hmm. and there's that genuinity. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's important that as Africans in the diaspora that uh, uh, we get out there and are able to tell our stories. Right. So, right. Yeah. Um, going back to uh, the importance of uh, telling our story, uh, I was listening to Komla Damour, who passed away, worked for the BBC, and there's an important quote that he mentioned in one of his talks. He said, um, as long as the hunter, as long as um, like whoever writes history, if there's a hunter and a lion, mm -hmm. The hunter uh, will always like glorify his glorify his, 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 his own his, victory. He, he does, Never he talks does. about like the hunt and, 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 and the lion. Does, and so does. I feel like we're in that position of like for so long our stories have been told. Mm -hmm. and, and Simon O'Keller, who's the ED for One Vibe, always re, you know is always reassuring us that you know your story is your power. And I feel mm -hmm. like if we ever powerless, then it's stepping into that, that, that place of it telling is, our story. It is, it is. It is. And, yeah. and, and, and there's another adage that mm -hmm. goes that uh, the victor tells the story. Right. And the victor's never going to tell the story of the right. victor. Right. It's going to be the victor. Right. And uh, right. The, the piece, I think, around us, uh, I've, I've seen so much content mm -hmm. that's being written by the West. Mm -hmm. Not so much content mm -hmm. and literature. With their own biases, written, you know. With their own biases. Right, yes, right. Of, of, of who we are as mm -hmm. a people and uh, what we are doing, but not as many stories are being told by ourselves mm -hmm. and what we are doing. Mm -hmm. so, so I think as Africans, I think that's a space we have to get into. Uh, so part of my pastimes uh, is writing, actually. Okay, so you, so, you uh, what are you writing? Are you writing, writing plays? <laughs> are you writing, what, what kind of writing so, are you doing? So I have a book launch uh, okay. next year in Uganda, uh -huh. in, in May of next year in Uganda, okay. in Kampala. Okay. And uh, the book is about the history of Buganda. Mm -hmm. When Buganda was being started, uh, there was the, the what we call the, the beginning month. The beginning man, the first man that mm -hmm, came. Mm -hmm. His name is Kintu. Kintu, Kintu is the Adam ah. of, uh, of, of Uganda. Okay. And when Kintu. he came to the region, uh, he came with nine clans and he found five ah. other clans. And when he came, he conquered the five clans that were present. Mm -hmm. And after conquering those five clans, uh, he competed against another gentleman that was called Bemba Musota. Bemba Musota. Bemba Musota. Okay. And uh, after winning that war, uh, it became 13 clans in total, and that 13 clans led to the growth of the uh, the Buganda and the Baganda. Mm -hmm. So my writing is fictional, but it's uh, a history type of fiction mm -hmm. that as Africans we have to take literature, we have to like write literature, mm -hmm. but also we have to tell mm -hmm. that story. Because I, you know, today when you go back to Uganda, uh, many of us get uh, a little bit disappointed right, by the right. type of literature that our people are seeing mm. in media, on mm. the TVs. It's, 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 it's Western uh, content that is, 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 is most adored by right. kids in school. Yeah. So at some point, I think uh, we have to be more passionate about it because mm. the Chinese have done it. Yeah. 30, 35 years ago, they uh, made a project time. about literature, about film production. Mm -hmm. And today, the, the Chinese are moving at a fast pace yeah. as compared to 30, 35 years ago because they made that conscious decision at some point. Right, and right. that has made all the change and the transformation because right. what it has made possible is identity. Who you right. are. And it's sparking, it's the, mm -hmm. that's the whole idea. Like, uh, for example, the, this movie Black Panther. was like, oh, yes. whatever Black Panther is a Marvel movie, all the money goes to Disney. And for me, I just sat back and I thought about um, 
the spark, like you're saying, just sparking people to see themselves in that light is powerful, is, 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 is deserving, is part of a global conversation. You know, and so yeah, I feel like yeah. that that is important work. It is, it is. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. Good luck with uh, with the writing, and you know, I, I can't wait to see the book and send a book our way, of course. I hope we will have you on this show, the podcast, when, when, when you're launching the book at one point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. It's been an honor, brother. Thank thanks. you so much for, uh, for, for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, so, everyone. Uh, by any chance, do you... Oh, let's, let's uh, by any chance, I want you to... Uh, add your words of, of wisdom is the, is the outro uh, to, to any young African out there that is aspiring to either move to the U.S. or be part of the global, you know, global... Um, conversation of, mm. around Africa. What would you? Um... And, and 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 I think what I've said. I was actually interviewed in Uganda at the beginning of this year, and I was asked the same question: mm. Could you advise people to move to the US? Yeah. And my answer was no. Is mm. is if we are comfortable in Uganda, mm. there's no reason for you to leave Uganda or to leave the continent and come out. Mm. Now I think uh, what I usually say: Many young people uh, that, that 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 we have been in their shoes for. They're always saying, I want to find my calling. I want to find my passion. Mm. And I think the passion finds you. You get into spaces that you feel comfortable and you find your passion, you find ah. your calling there. So it's, it's, it's a different ideology and philosophy, but I think there's reasoning and ways in how it can work. So I, I always say, find what you're comfortable with and in the process, you're gonna find your calling and you're gonna find your passion. So awesome. thank you so much once again to yeah. having me this evening. All right. so, Hey, you're welcome, you're welcome, brother. Appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, uh, it's uh, been yet another episode. Uh, we are Diaspora Connect uh, as a podcast. Be sure to subscribe to One Vibe uh, TV on YouTube and follow us on all our social media platforms at One Vibe Africa. My name is Ken Joero. Yet again, on the bowl nights, I'll see you on the other good side of food, or the other <laughs> side of good food. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.